Okay, so we've got another fairly early start. A little bit later than what we should have been, yeah? But if I look at it, I'll tell you the sea is so flat, we're not going to have much of a gap or a window. Once the tide starts pushing over these banks with a flat sea like this, the white water starts disappearing. And if you don't have working water, you can pack up and go home because you're not going to catch much. Uh. But we can only try. It's a beautiful day. A bit of a walk ahead of us now. We're going up past the gap, probably about three kilometers. But we'll keep watching as we go, just so we can find one or two little banks that might have a gutter or two in between it and uh, put a bait out there. You never know unless you try. Let's get going. Now with most South African beaches, every time you walk down it, there's that eeriness of what's gonna bite today. But I, I can't walk past something like this. If you have a look over here, we've got a very shallow bank there in front of us, and it just drops straight into deep water. There's a bank to the right over here, but as I say, with a small swell, there's not much working water on it. Every now and again, you'll see a wave come rolling over. But what I want to do is, I want to get to the front of this bank, and as far as I can, get a bait out the back there. Hopefully, we can get a bend in the rod. So, the first choice of bait for today is going to be a little shad head. Got a little bit lucky the other day, just after work, I shot down in front of Angling and Marine, there are my checkers in that bay over there. I went for a quick throw, I finished at four, so I started fishing around quarter to five, it was a howling east wind. But as we always say in fishing, you never know unless you go and try. I was there for about 20 minutes and I saw all these birds diving just behind the back line. And it was something out of, the only way I can explain it, is something out of National Geographic as all these sardines just came flying out the water. Being lucky I stayed quite, quite close there so I ran home, got the little rod, put on a little spoon, I didn't even tie a leader, I just looped the line, put the spoon on, ran back down and it turned out to be one of the most funnest afternoon in catching shad. We can go have a look at that clip now real quickly. As Daniel explained, he went down to the beach with totally different expectations as to what was about to happen. With all those sardines coming into this bay here, uh, there had to be shad around. Luckily you're staying right here, you can run home, get your spoon, your shad rod, have a couple of shad. It's always good fun. much fun. There's a 
Get in one. Just got hold of that one. Daniel made short work of getting his quota of four decent shad, with a minimum size limit being 30 centimeters in South Africa. So everybody has their own way of doing things. Some will put the head facing up, some will put the head facing down. It's uh, we all do it what works for us. Now the reason I do that is just to give the cotton something to hold on to. Otherwise I just keep sliding over onto the front of the bait the whole time. I want to do quite a fairly big bait. Try and keep it as streamlined as possible. But until you, it's not the easiest thing to work with. Got a few guys that have joined us here today. Some of the customers that come in to the shop. The guys always want to know where do you go and fish? How do you do things? It's always nice to have guys come with you. Not that I say my way is always the best way, but each guy's got his own way of doing things. And if someone can learn a little bit from that, it's always a pleasure to show somebody how we do it and what we do and hopefully that they can take something away with it. And the most important thing about all the fishing and what you learn and what you do and where you go is at the end of the day you've got to have a good time. It's got to bring joy to your life no matter how you do it. Um, it's got to be a pleasure to do it. Oh! Juices coming out there. <laughs> Something with teeth has to be taken. Got. It's still a little bit frozen, so we'll just mold it as we go along. Yeah. There's the first bait. We've got the headpiece in the inside of it. We got all the juices from the guts and everything on the outside and then what I did is I wrapped a fillet on the opposite side of that. As I say, that's just how I do it. Hopefully a shark's going to be interested in it and be happy with it. The big one should have landed.
Fishing the trolleys these days allow you to move quicker from spot to spot and try different baits for different areas until you can find the bite. It's At Cobble Yo's we have 11 km of beach running from where the rocks finish all the way to Hunter's mouth. And this area has got various different types of formation that can be tried. Tiny little hook, that little chocker bait, awesome little fish. Okay guys, so we got a nice little blue ray, finally you got a bite. Tiny little hook, just made a small little chocker bait with some little tentacles, and it wasn't long when it was on it. Let's see if we can get another one, and that was really fun. Grunty. So as on this bank that we're throwing over here, you can see the water is just trying to push over it. So there's a slight bit of a roll with the white water coming over, which makes it really nice. Okay guys, so that's the end of today. So as you can see it's way too clean, it's far too flat. Any working water that was here early on in the low tide is now gone. We're basically fishing in a dam. So that is it for today. One or two little fishies, nothing much to speak about though. But we'll be back, we don't give up that easily. See you next time.